Hello everyone, this is Ricky Fury again, bringing you another video talking about survivability in Star Trek Online. My previous videos covered damage resistance, as well as mission reward survivability consoles, as well as threat generation and how that works inside the game. This video will be going over the basic survival abilities that either every ship has, or can easily have access to with bridge officer abilities. So let's get started. So the first ability is called Dis Distribute Shield Power. Now this is an inherent ability capable to all ships at the beginning of, of the game. Now when I initially started the game, it was available right after the, the tutorial. However, depending on how the tutorials have changed, this may even be available as soon as the first time you enter your starship. For many of the obscure abilities on your ship, you, you, you can find them by pressing the P button. And then you, you can actually scroll through and find all the different weird stuff that you have happen here. And you, you, you can drag them down to, down to your active toolbar. Um, because this this ability distribute shield power is definitely not one that, that by, by default is going to show up down there. Um, now on literally, literally all of my starships, this is the ability that is in tray one spot number one. Um, and this is the ability that I spam a ton when I'm in space battles. Now technically, whenever you like if you, if you like click or have like air buttons like transfer to a specific shield facing whenever they're starting to get low, it technically does a little bit more. Um, but especially whenever you worry about lots of different abilities, trying to worry about positioning your ship, um, being able just to keep on spamming this thing, a, a ton is definitely really nice. Um, however, um, this is a little bit overshadowed by a different ability, which I'll be covering a little bit later in this video. Now, ability number two is called Evasive Maneuvers. Now, this ability comes to you super quickly in the game at about level five. And it's great for moving around as well as survival in a pinch. Now it does give flight speed, turn rate, and, and a little bit of, of, of defense rating depending upon, upon your um, engine power, which which for tanks it's always going to be super low. Um, but the really important thing when it comes to survivability is, is the very last point here. is that whenever you use invasive maneuvers, you're immune to movement and pairing effects for two seconds. So especially in, the, in like a PvP environment, this is insanely critical. So let, let, let's give an example for that. Let's say that, that you're fighting an enemy science vessel and he hits you really hard with, with a gravity well that, that, is, that is anchoring you and stopping you from leaving the damage area of all his other AOE science abilities. If you activate base maneuvers, um, you'll, you'll be able to move, probably be able to move far enough away that you, you can escape the gravity well with, with the two seconds of, of movement impaired immunity as well as significantly increased flight speed and turn rate. So yeah, it's, it's an insanely valuable skill. Um, you might not necessarily need it in in a PvE like Q environment, but especially for PvP, it's definitely something that's very valuable to have. The third ability that I'll be covering is called Brace for Impact. Now this ability comes decently early in the game as well at level 12, and is great for general survival. It gives you a lot of temporary hit points when you activate it, as well as significantly higher kinetic damage resistance. Now, as, as a tank that, that is often close to many enemy vessels in most space battles and queues, as being closer to an enemy when dealing damage gives more threat, as I explained in the threat generation video, um, in, in the very last video, um, I am very often close to the, or inside the radius damage of exploding starships, which is kinetic damage. Now, when a starship is about to explode, and I really feel like my ship can't can afford to take the hit, um, I often will activate this right beforehand for the temporary hit points, as well as as that significant increase in, in kinetic damage. Now, for a super e extreme example, if you had zero damage resistance rating, and activated this tier three ability of brace for in impact, your damage resistance rating for kinetic damage would increase from zero percent all the way up to 58.1% damage resistance. So yeah, so, so even, even, even if you're in, in, in like, like a tackle tip ship or a science ship that isn't tanky, this, this connect damage resistance rating does give you a significant amount of percentage. Now, whenever it is a 0%, here it gives you up to, to 58.1. Now, what does it do when I activate it? It only increases to 63.8. So I mean, like it's it's still close to that ballpark, just because, as I talked about, the nonlinear re regressive scaling. Um, I mean, like like it, it still gives a decent bump, 
but really like for me as as a tank when i already have a lot of damage resistance i activate this more for the temporary hit points which may be occurring in that circumstance it might occur in a different circumstance than for the kinetic damage resistance that that you really really want for a really squishy ship like really close to a ship that, that's about to explode so yeah now i will go to the next ability which is called tactical team now, when a lot of you probably talked about this, this, when I talked about distribution power earlier, you're like, why do I need this power when, when I have this ability? And like, like it is true for a lot of non-tank players, like science, a lot of science captains, a lot of tactical captains. If you have one or one or two of these tactical team abilities on your ship, for most situations in the game, you probably don't need distribution shield power. It's really just tanks that absolutely need that because tackle team isn't always going to be up. Just because we, we, we can't really afford to have two tactical teams on our ship. Unless, of course, you get off um, guys that um, that lower tackle team cooldown. Um, but but, um, but yeah, um, everyone who has tackle team typically has this not because of the passive stuff like remove hostile boarding power, it's remove tackle debuffs. Um, increasing energy and projectile weapon damage training. No, it's really like that last one. Oh, distributes shield strength to shields receiving damage for 10 seconds. So yeah, um, if, if for some reason you don't have this um, ability in, in one of your in one of your DOF slots, you really should put it in there. Um, and, and, and this should especially just go in the instant slot. Now, the last really important one that I'm going to cover in this little video is called reverse shield polarity. This is the oh crap ability <laughs> when, when you're when you're trying to use your abilities like tackle team and others and you have no shielding left like everything's depleted and no matter what you do like try and distribute shield power when you have no shield power like shield like stuff around here it's not going to matter so as in those situations where using this ability is really really nice so like after after you use this ability like the shield phase is under attack. Um, will get recharged by a certain percentage of the damage being dealt to that facing. Uh, at rank two, it's 77 percent. At rank at rank um, three, if 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 you have if if you're a tank engineer um, with with a level four swap in engineering, this rank here um, um, will restore 99 percent of that damage that that's coming in, which is which is especially helpful um, as as a tank if if you're trying to measure how much damage the enemy is dealing. Just being able to visually look, like knowing how much your shields are and how much the shields are being being regenerated by that damage, it's pretty easy to know how much damage the enemy is actually dealing to you. Now, for other abilities in general, um, there's two particular abilities that I would highly recommend for anyone in terms of, in terms of survival. Now, these these things I'll cover in the next video under, under shield resistance, but um, an ability called emergency emergency power to shields. It's extremely helpful uh, because I'm um, um, sure, like it does a little bit of shield regeneration, but just even at the level one ability, it gives 18% shield resistance. Now that those other two last things down there, it, that's that's there because of a special trait that I have, which is kind of broken in, in the game right now. Um, but 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 those other other things, um, anyone that has this, this ability is going to have that. A bit of shield regeneration for, and and shield power for the th for the 30 seconds. And um, keep in mind that, uh, that, that, if, that if you activate this 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 ability, and then after after the after the 15 seconds, like you activate different different ability like emergency power to weapons, um, this this pass amount of like the 18% shield resistance is still going to be there even after you activate activate this this ability o over here. Um, so yeah, that 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 18% shield resistance is active until right now. And right now, now that shield resistance is off. So yeah, yeah especially e even if you're doing mainly emergency power to weapons, um, if you need an extra survival tool in PVE, I would highly suggest emergency power to weapons. Now, obviously, in, in a PvP environment, you're going to want this to be emergency power to engines instead, just because in PvP you really, really want the movement typically. Um, some of the other ones. Um, that are, are nice to have too. Um, science team one for healing. Um, engineering team one. Um, 
I suppose this is for a different video, but um, and also um, hazard emitters is super nice as well. Um, simply because um, not only do you get um, um, damage over, over, over time, um, it gives you a little bit of damage resistance, which is really nice, as well as it continuously removes hazard debuffs and DOTs on you. Um, so like, like there are a lot of science DOTs that can be placed on you. Certain weapons like plasma especially um, will often put DOTs on, on your ship. This thing can help re remove that whenever you're fight fighting guys like the Borg or the Romulans. Have transfer shield strength also has shield resistance on it. Um, in, in the next video, uh, when, I, when I'll be talking a lot about shield resistance and why the game kind of sucks because of because of this thing and why it doesn't talk about it, um, I'll, be, I'll be going into, into a lot of big de detail into that in, in the next video. Um, but yeah, um, the TLDR with um, survivability, um, there are a couple of really cool abilities: just with shield power, um, basic maneuvers, um, brace for impact. Um, tactical team and virtual polarity. Um, these these are all ones that um, that I would highly highly suggest that you you consider and use w w while you're playing Star Trek on online. And there, of course, there are other other survival abilities that you you can also use um, in order to make yourself um, survive a, a bit longer in fights. So yeah, um, that's a bit all for the for the for the video today. And thanks for for listening in.